Today, today. My name is Inna Jared, and today Mr. Abdullah came up to protest again against our highway. And we, the citizens and the, and, and the villagers from this area, today we celebrate Nora Tree, and we are fed up. We are totally fed up. Right now, all the ABN Church, Pinal, Sipa area, Mondays, everybody having a, a celebration at this moment in time. A celebration they call Nora Tree, and we are filled up. Everybody is praying at this moment. You know, Abdullah came over here and he have his press conference. We don't want that. We tell him leave, leave. The reason for we are totally filled up. We we have thousands of people support this highway. We have thousand people support this highway. Thousand and thousand of people support this highway, and we are totally filled up. We want them to stop and tell them stop because we have totally filled up of them. That's it. For the communities of Separia and Pinal and Debe and so on, it will am ameliorate the environmental and the potential environmental damage um, as a result of a construction of a four-lane highway from Mondesir to Debe. It would alleviate the environmental damage to the Northern Range that would result from massive quarrying of the Northern Range to get landfill and irrigate for that four-lane highway. It would save the the, 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 the land and the homes and the communities that are threatened by the four-lane highway with its interchanges and so on. And so in this way, we save taxpayers billions of dollars. So in this way, we think there's a win-win situation, which is what we are proposing, a rational um, approach to the resolution of what is a long, outstanding issue. And I would like to ask now uh, Ms. Shireen Budai to read the press release. Well, I'll, 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 I'll do that in a while, Ivan. I, I, let, Ms. Budai, well, let me just say that Dr. Kublai Singh has simply asked me to facilitate, given obviously his situation being on hunger strike and so on. He's unable to be down here this morning. I did speak with, his, with him this morning, and he's asked me simply to facilitate this process um, to make sure that the, the, the point of view of the highway route movement, the alternative uh, proposal that is being put forward now, which we think is eminently sensible and reasonable, um, and would see a situation where the government gets its solution to the traffic problems, the community is um, satisfied because their, their homes and their community is not destroyed, the environment is not adversely affected, taxpayers save money, and therefore we have a win-win situation. And Dr. Kublasi has asked me to facilitate this process on his behalf, and I'm very honored and pleased so to do. So I'm going to ask... Ivan, I'm going to ask Ms. Budai now to read the press release. We can talk after that, right? Okay, good morning, members of the media. Good morning, everybody. My name is Shireen Budai. I'm a resident of San Francisco. I'm a member of the Highway Route Movement, and I will now be reading our press release entitled Our Optimum Connectivity Proposal. 
This proposal is based on a main road, similar to the connecting roads in the area, running from the Debe Interchange across the main road at Gandhi Village, parallel to Debe Trace, crossing Sucha Trace, across to Gopi Trace, running parallel to Raju Trace, crossing San Francisco Main Road, and on to the SS Airing Road, south of the San Francisco SS Airing Road. We have come up with 10 points. One, this main road is based on the concept of connector road. Connector, link, bypass, auxiliary, feeder roads go around communities and are less destructive than highways where huge economic, social and ecological resources are at risk. It would be built at the level and width of other roads in the area and so will fit into the general road architecture, not disrupt and fragment it. Two, there will be no need for large destructive interchanges at Pinal, Siparia, Faisabad, or overpasses and underpasses. Three, it will take approximately 10 minutes at most to get from one end to the other. Four, it will save our treasury a sum approaching a billion dollars or more. Five, there will only be moderate disruption of the Urupuch Lagoon. Six, it will save the communities and homes not already destroyed on the state's proposed highway route. Seven, the majority, if not all the properties, that is land and homes on this new route has already been acquired by the state. Eight, it will take minimal time to construct, time which could be spent on the proposed highway reroute from the Debe interchange to the new San Fernando to Point Fortin Highway. Nine, it will be a formidable connectivity asset to commu commuters from Siparia, Pinal, and Debe. It provides a major link between the SS Airene Main Road south of the San Francisco SS Airene Main Road to Debe Interchange and the Debe to Golconda Highway. It will connect with the entire rich grid of streets already connected to Siparia, Pinal, and Debe. And 10, given all the circumstances, it is the optimum practical technical solution that could be achieved. This and other roads could be enhanced incrementally and other similar roads added. Other connectors could be made to a proposed highway running across uninhabited former Karani lands from the Debe interchange to join the San Fernando to Point Fortin Highway. This proposed highway route will avoid the Urupuch Lagoon completely. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Shreen. And then what we'd like to do is um, Terence has some maps mm -hmm. so that we like, because I know that uh, many persons hearing those details, uh, even persons familiar with the South, wouldn't necessarily see it in their, in their, in their mind. Um, and persons in North Trinidad and Central Trinidad tracks who are unfamiliar with, with the um, geography and the, the roads in, the, in this part of the country would be totally lost by those descriptions. So Terence has some, some map or a map, and, and he will show it, and then we will try to um, show you physically as we drive um, what, what this map means, because it's important that we recognize that some work has already been done um, on the Bondezir to, to Debe Highway, and so what we're trying to do is to avoid um, the, the construction of that, but at the same time not saying that that work would be totally lost and so on, right? So... Um, Terence? All right, my name is Terence Budai. I'm a member of the Highway Reroute Movement. So this is just a general map of uh, a portion of the southwestern peninsula focusing on the region of the new highway project. So I just want to illustrate to you here Debe in, the, in red. This is Paria Suites here. And this is Point Fortin. So... Along the north, you see the San Fernando to Point Fortin Highway passing through Paria Suites uh, via Opuch into Mondesi going down to Guapo and Point Fortin. This here is Golconda. This highway from Golconda to Debe has already been built, as you, as you all probably know. From Debe to Paria Suites in the dotted line, this shows the original route that was proposed by the Highway Reroute Movement going across empty county lands that would link the Golconda Highway back to the San Fernando to Point Fortin Highway. Right? So what, what you see here in this region is the area between Barkpo and Mondesi. 
these blue lines these squiggly lines that you see throughout the region is really representing the rich network of roads that we currently have in the region not all of them are in a good condition drivable condition but it just shows how well connected or Pinal, Debe, Siparia and Faizabad are um, via these roads. So um, as an addendum to the original Debe to Paria Suites highway that we proposed um, during this week, the Highway Reroute Movement together with Dr. Kublal Singh looked at another, another idea that we hope to propose to the government. This involves, like Shireen mentioned, a dual carriageway, which is what typically known as a main road, right, coming from Debe on Debe Interchange that will pass through Gandhi Village. It will then run alongside Debe Trace, right? Then cross Suchit Trace to Gopi Trace and then run parallel to Raju Trace and then meet the um, San Francisco Road. And from San Francisco Road, head southward to the SS Airin Road. Now you will notice something. The, this roadway has many advantages and I'll, I'll point them out. One is that somebody coming from the highway or once you're in Debe, you need not pass through the SS Airin Road between Debe and Pinal that is heavily trafficked and you can bypass that road and go beyond Pinal and simply come out onto the SS Airin Road and get to Siparia because Siparia was a, a, one of the talking points you know that our route proposal was cutting it off. Through this route you will actually get to Siparia within 10-15 minutes from Debe and therefore bypass um, the SS Airin Road. Another thing about this road is that it will not have the same ecological or environmental footprint as, the, as a four-lane highway. It is a dual carriageway. The government has already started clearing these lands. Most, if not all, of these lands along this path have been acquired by the state already. So therefore, this road can be built without further acquisition of homes, communities, and so on. Another thing is, because this road is the same width as a normal main road, and the fact that it will not have to be built on an embankment, it will be on the same level or height as other main roads. It will not require over a million tons of aggregate from the northern range, and therefore the ecological footprint on the northern range, as well as the space required um, along this path, will not be will not will be significantly reduced. So basically, what we intend is for all of these roads that you see here to connect into this dual carriageway, this new dual carriageway, if they need to get onto it. So we, we propose a, a phased approach to doing this and not spending billions of dollars in one year. We, we propose that the main roads connect into here and also for either new roads or connector roads to be built or make use of the existing roads to connect onto the Debe Tapaya suites and proposed highway which passes across empty county lands. Again, no houses, no communities here. Along this route, the houses have already been acquired. So therefore, the, the footprint is going to be significantly reduced and we believe through a phased approach of connecting, a series of connector and feeder roads in the region, we could, like um, Mr. Abdullah said, produce a win-win situation for all concerned. Thank you very much. Well, the other, the other, se the Debe to Mondesi segment would have been here. So what we are proposing is for this to replace that highway and for these roads, especially Siparia, which has been a major talking point, the Pinal and Siparia, to connect onto this road and get onto the highway either through this route here or from Debe to Paria Suites down here. Yes. Can you restate mm -hmm. for the public and for the people in Point Four mm -hmm. in Cedrus and its environs mm -hmm. how this would not affect uh, them? Right, so the people in, in Point Fourteen, which is on this end of the map here, and then you have Cedrus further south, yes. southwest, right? Palo Seco, all those places, they can connect, they can get on to the San Fernando to Point Fourteen Highway. Right. So this highway is running from here along the creek going through Oropooch via Mondesi to Point Fortin. That's a four-lane highway. The highway reroute movement 
um, it, it has stated time and time again, we are not against the San Fernando to Point Fourteen Highway. So these areas are largely unaffected because they will continue to use the highway that is currently being built. And, and, and I think and we want to re-emphasize the point that uh, the Point Fourteen to San Fernando Highway would not necessitate you having to go into um, Separia and all of those areas here. Yeah. No, it, yeah. it would not. It yeah. would not. They would that, is why, that is why the proposal that uh, that the uh, route movement has is a proposal that takes into consideration the San Fernando 2.14. I think that, that needs to be clear because they continue to push the propaganda that we are against point four to San Fernando, uh, San Fernando Highway. There's nothing further from the truth. In fact, the point must be made that if they were going directly from San Fernando to Point Fortin without all of these extra, which is costing taxpayers billions of dollars extra, that highway would have been completed a long time ago. Yeah? And that's the point we want to make to the Point Fortin people who are misguided that the highway that was originally meant from San Fernando to Point Fortin, we are in full support of that. And uh, what we are not in support of is this extra piece of highway which is costing uh, exorbitant sums of money in the tune of billions of dollars extra which taxpayers have to pay and of course in numerous costs to the environment and so on. So uh, I, I think that, that that is something that we have always been saying and we, we need to make the point again that there's an existing network of roads already which only need to be upgraded and connected back to the main route, uh, the highway, so that this uh, traffic that they're talking about will be eliminated by the widening and the upgrade of those roads making access to the highway. I wish to make one last point, that everybody in Trinidad and Tobago cannot get a highway coming into their town or to their homes or to their villages and so on. And therefore, and therefore uh, the upgrade of, of, of those roads, which is much like those that connects to the San Fernando to Port of Spain Highway. You don't have the San Fernando to Port of Spain Highway going into Claxton Bay and into Gasparillo and into Coover and all of that. All of those arteries connect back to the main thoroughfare, which is the highway. And that is the point that we are making here. I wish to reinforce this point again that we are in full support of the highway from San Fernando to Point Fort in the shortest uh, distance between two points is a straight line and you have n no reason to except of course um, the corruption that exists that we know. I want to make a, a, one statement here that the people we see coming out this morning they are paid. They have a vested interest to do what they are doing and that has nothing to do with development. It has to do with the development of their pockets and their own individual circumstance, much to the uh, disregard of environment and of uh, the country at large. And the country must be told that for generations to come, people who have no direct benefit from this extra money that goes into the pockets of those individuals who are friends of the government, the uh, general citizenry must know that they are being called upon to pay for something that is absolutely not necessary, has nothing to do with development and so on. It has to do with the corruption that they have that has become such a commonplace with this government and of course those who oppose what they are upholding now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, Covered Roger. Sorry? On behalf of Greenpeace, I wanted to point out something with the map. Could we, could we set up the stand so people could save their muscles? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. You might have to reduce the height a little bit for short people. Thank you. Who else wants to come in? Okay, one more could fit in here. Yes, good morning again, Judith Devertal. I would like to from Greenpeace, based on the suggestion that I've heard this morning, the highway reroute movement has yet again come up with a solution to go around the lagoon, not to interfere with the wetlands, not to interfere with the vegetation, the flora and fauna indigenous to the wetlands, which is needed. We are talking just this weekend at the UN about climate change, and we have to remember that we too have to do our part to reduce our carbon footprint, to do what is right in terms of development, but sensible development, not just development without a plan. Okay, and um, as one of the members just pointed out to me, remember that the connecting roads
don't necessarily always go into the highway, as Mr. Roger mentioned. So on behalf of Greenpeace, apart from the suggestion that went forward before passing through the Karani lands, which does not need any aggregate to come from the northern range, we now have another one, another suggestion that will work in tandem with the first suggestion, and I think it's an excellent idea. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, my contact number is 333-3173. Greenpeace. Okay. Ms. Budai wants to make, and then I will respond to any questions for sure. Yes, Shri? Okay. Um, well, as you know, I'm a member of the Highway Root Movement. But more than that, I'm a citizen of this country and I'm a patriot. And I want to see real, genuine, sustainable development for this country and for the community in which I live. There is a solution to this problem. And that is for the Prime Minister to engage in dialogue with the Highway Root Movement and with Dr. Kablau Singh. Dialogue which needs to be meaningful which, mean, which needs to be genuine dialogue that needs to focus, m must be solution focused. We are very prepared, we are happy to meet, to discuss, to sit around the table, to present the pros and cons, to present our arguments, for the government to present their arguments. But those arguments must be backed up by science and evidence, not just hearsay and not just what we feel. And that will bring resolution to this problem. Our, the thing about it is, highways might be suitable for some areas, but it is not suitable for David to Mondesir. It is not, we have to think about the government, the people of this country, we have to think about what is the best system of road connectivity for the area of David to Mondesir, given the existing land uses in the area. And what we are proposing here, our optimum connectivity proposal, we are saying that 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 will be a solution. It's a proposal. We are not saying it has to be done. We are open to negotiation. We are open to dialogue. We are open to suggestions. But at the end of the day, this is the way to go to come to achieve the objectives of both sides, to arrive at a win-win situation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. to take this proposal to the government? To be sending it on. Okay. Yeah, it will be sent on from the highway movement. Um, but the point that Ms. Budai made is also very important. The government has to be open to dialogue. Um, the government cannot take the position that they're not prepared to negotiate, they're not prepared to discuss, they're not prepared to engage in dialogue. Um, that position is totally contrary to any notion of democratic engagement of citizens to arrive at what is the optimum solution for the community and for the country as a whole. Let us remember that in 2012, the government agreed with the proposal coming from civil society, the Joint Consultative Council, FITON, Federation of Independent Trade Unions and NGOs, Women Working for Social Progress, Giant Tobago Transparency Institute, and other NGOs, which um, proposal was for an independent review of the highway. A very high-powered team of professionals, multidisciplinary, chaired by then independent senator, Dr. James Armstrong, who is himself a professional planner, spent many, many days and weeks and prepared a, a major report reviewing the Mondesir to Debe Highway. And in that report, they recommended that studies which are essential to support the construction of the Debe Mondesir Highway had not been done. The um, environmental impact assessment, the, the social and economic impact assessment, and, and other studies including a transportation plan had not been done prior to the start of the construction of the of, of this highway and they recommended that these studies be done so that the country could engage in major projects and development on the basis of proper scientific assessment and evaluation the government agreed that they would abide by the recommendations of the Armstrong committee two years have now elapsed and the government has not implemented the recommendations of the Armstrong Committee. And so that was a travesty of justice, a travesty of democracy, a travesty of what is right and what is fair, of what is good governance. The Highway Route Movement has now come up with another alternative proposal, 
and is seeking dialogue around this proposal, consistent with the original principal position of connectivity and so on. And this proposal, as has been described by both Ms. Budai and by Terence Budai, um, with the map has been very carefully thought out and which we think is eminently reasonable. And therefore the government must agree to sit down and discuss this issue. That is absolutely essential. They must sit down and agree um, to negotiate and discuss it in the shortest possible time because Dr. Kobla Singh is on a hunger strike right now. As this, this is priority. They must sit, they cannot take the position that this matter is in the court. Let me remind that what is law may not necessarily be justice. So that as the courts deliberate over years, lands are being affected and destroyed, homesteads are being lost, the environment is being degraded. If we allow that to continue, by the time the courts finally determine the matter, it may very well be too late to save the communities. Because the highway would have been, the Mondezir to Debe highway would have com been completed in terms of its construction, which would not be justice. It might be legal, but it might not be justice. And a matter could be withdrawn from the court at any time, and a bilateral settlement arrived at, registered in the court subsequently. So the Prime Minister is misleading the country when she says that her hands are tied because the matter is in the court. As a lawyer, she should know that you could settle a matter outside of the court and register that decision with the court. And the courts actually like that because it saves judicial time, it saves um, the, the, the fees to lawyers, and so much else. And it saves much grief and so on because when two parties arrive at a mutual solution, it is more acceptable to both parties rather than having a judgment imposed by a third party. So our view is dialogue government now. You will receive the proposals with the map and the important thing is for them to agree to sit down and di discuss. So, so David, um, this not happening, right? This is not happening. Where, I know you, the mantle was passed on to you. The mantle was passed on to you. We want to find out from you how far you all expect to take this because it looked like hearing from, from Dr. Kublai Singh is that he, he's planning on a, he's going to, to die. This is what we are picking up. If that happens, what's going to be... I don't think Dr. Kobla Singh has gone on hunger strike to die. No. He's done something which is a very personal decision yes. to take a stand for what he believes is right and what is just. It's a very courageous decision, and we respect that decision um, in defense of what of not just the communities, but in defense of the interests of, of Trinidad and Tobago generally. And what we are now seeking to do is to is by this new proposal is to have a situation where we can resolve this matter, deal with the traffic problems of the communities in the Deep South, deal with the environmental issues, deal with saving taxpayers' money, and that will also enable Dr. Kublai Singh to stop his hunger strike. So we're not looking at that, Ivan. We're not thinking about those ends. Yeah. What we are thinking about right now, which is why we are here today on a public holiday, significantly Republic Day, which is a very important day because all citizens on Republic Day are supposed to take responsibility for the direction of this country. That's why we are here and so on. Um, and, and what we are here so that you could share with the country. So the country now knows there is a way out, which is a win-win way out. David, this not happening. We see it's not happening. No, I don't what, know that. We are not... No, 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 no. Ivan, no, Ivan, no, no. let, let me say, let me, let, no, 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 we are not, no, no, we are not, that is not thinking, our thinking whatsoever. Our thinking is that the people of Trinidad and Tobago must say to the government, sit down and engage in dialogue with the Highway Route Movement around this alternative proposal to bring a resolution. That is what we are saying. Yes, yes. As a, okay? As a, as a to Ivan Kassel, how would you describe Dr. Kubasi at this present point in time? Because he's not here. He called me this morning, um, early this morning he called me and we had a conversation and um, he said, I asked him how he is, he said he's fine, he's okay, obviously he's a bit weaker because the hunger strike is continuing, but he's fine, he's okay, um, he was very lucid and we discussed this tour this morning um, and he wished us well and I said that yes, I'm sure that it will go well and we look forward to you members of the media communicating what we have shared with the public so that this press conference will be a success. Okay? Good. Thank you. All right. Now, yes. No, we could, yes, we could. You, you can't go on the road? Eh?
you want So do come back, do come back. Go to your left.